Hi, this is uh, Apollyon from Oranoir, and you're listening to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back, or for the first time, to the Thomas Eriksson podcast. And uh, Thomas Eriksson, that is me. I also happen to be the person behind the Norwegian black metal band, uh, Mork. Yup. Did you miss me? I, ha- I have been away for a long, long while now. I just uh, checked back. Uh, the, f- the last episode was actually early, early March. And uh, even... A few days before the release of the fifth uh, Mork album, Cathedral. So it's been a while. What is it now? Is it, let's see here, the 8th, 8th of August. It's been a while. What has happened? Well, as I said, the album, uh, Cathedral, uh, the fifth album, was released uh, through Peace Wheel Records uh, in March. The reception was uh, amazing. Uh, really appreciate all the support and the positive feedback on that one. Uh, it's obviously a really important thing for me when I release my music, which is uh, yeah, uh, kind of the most personal you could get, in a way. So it's great to have that out there. Cathedral, that is. You can uh, you can pick up uh, a copy, uh, vinyl, CD, and even some merch and stuff. Uh, we even uh, got back patches now, uh, and small patches for your battle jacket or battle vest over at the um, official uh, web shop, which uh, will be in the description somewhere. I'm I suppose. Uh, Morkisebakke.no which sounds quite heavy when I say it like that. So just go in the links and check it out. Thanks. Um, I think uh, only a few days after the last podcast was released, we did a streaming concert yet again, and uh, that was great. Uh, Lots of support there. Uh, It was free of charge, uh, which I think is the best way to go since it's not uh, actual physical attendance, you know. So, uh, But people uh, had the choice of donating some money to us if, if preferred, and uh, most of you did. So thank you very much for that. Um, what else did happen? I have to think. Uh, around the new album uh, release, there were obviously a couple of singles uh, we released. Uh, I suppose I already talked about the Arv music video in a previous podcast, but we also did a music video uh, together with uh, Dolk of uh, Kampfar, who has a guest appearance on the track Fett till och Haske. And uh, I see and hear that people... Um, they uh, mentioned that that title is actually also the title of a Morty's album, I think. And uh, just to clean my sleeve here, I, I was not uh, aware of that. To me, it's just a sentence or a title, you know, that I came up with. So um, that stuff happens sometime, you know. I have even noticed that there is about four... Uh, bands that call themselves Mork <laughs> on the on the metal encyclopedia online, but uh, there's only one Mork, which is this Mork, because uh, the word Mork is something I have kind of put together for myself, which is uh, unique in my way. But uh, the video was great. We shot it together with uh, an old friend of mine from Holden here, uh, Trond Atle Johansson. Uh, The video became really amazing. I think it has to be one of our top videos by now. uh, With some animated parts and uh, great band uh, footage uh, together with uh, Dolk there. 
So you can check that out on uh, on YouTube. And uh, as a single, because the thing is that that, that video was released uh, a bit after the album release. So to be able to use that track as a single uh, on the digi digital platforms, uh, we had to do make a different version of it. So there is a single version of Fötter och Herske on, uh, the, on the platforms. Um, you should check it out. Uh, what makes that one special is that I went back to my producer friend, uh, Freddy Holm, uh, and, uh, which is a great talent in uh, everything music. He, if he touches an instrument, he, he can learn it almost there and then. And uh, he has gotten into the strings with the cellos and brach and uh, violins and stuff. And we put some strings on there, some real strings throughout the track. So... Um, then you have two versions of that. Go check it out. It's the album version and then the single version. Check it out. Uh, on um, on uh, June 30th, uh, we got to play a really delayed release show. And uh, that was great. We, we were honored to be able to host our own headlining show at the the Centrum Scene stage in Oslo, which is uh, quite similar to the Rockefeller stage, perhaps a bit bigger, I'm not sure. But that was a great experience to bring the band to such a big uh, stage. Uh, the last time we did something in comparison to that has to be the Psycho Las Vegas show we did in uh, Vegas uh, a couple of years ago, which also was great. Uh, we were also honored to have the, the mighty Mortem, the old black metal pioneers that was going for a short while in the way, way beginning of black metal. And they, the, the band was laid to rest and they came back uh, a couple of years back now. And uh, for the first time we got to hook up and play together and that was great. Um, so they uh, were our support act that night. Uh, thanks a lot to the guys and uh, girls in attendance. It was obviously a, a COVID restriction based concert, so it wasn't a packed room there. It was uh, 200 tickets and uh, seat, seated uh, arrangements. But by the looks of it, it was kind of cool. There were tables uh, spread out with people and candlelight and stuff like that, so it looked kind of cool and cozy, if you want to call it that. Um, another cool thing is that uh, because of this show and uh, our new partnership with the, the band Mortem, uh, we got to know a few new faces. Uh, they are old faces in the history of black metal, but uh, it was the first time for me to meet, among amongst others, uh, the one and only Sverd Steinar Jonsson, uh, which... Uh, is most known f uh, from his main priority, which is Arcturus, the band. Um, he plays guitar now in uh, in Mortem, and he was also the original Mortem member uh, together with uh, Marius Vold. Got to know Steinar, and uh, we hit it off. Great guy, great person, laid back and chill, and we uh, came along excellently. So obviously then that triggered me to do a new podcast episode. So there you go. Thank you, Svarit. That's great. So um, this... Um, actually, yesterday, I came home right now. I've been spending uh, a day and a night uh, up at uh, Svarit's uh, house, uh, a bit north of Oslo, uh, in his own rehearsal uh, studio, and uh, we did this podcast, which kind of got... Uh, we, we decided to break it off in two. So this will be a two-parter uh, podcast episode. So this is part one. And uh, Steinar uh, Sverd will, will come to my house in a couple of weeks now. And we will finish his story and uh, journey. The thing is that when we were sitting there, you know... All of a sudden, 
Marius Wold, the singer of Mortem, uh, and Hugh from the bass player from Arcturus, and uh, Silenos of Dimmy Borgir just popped in the door there, you know. Then we can't sit around and talk in the microphones when there's a party going on, right? So uh, we packed it uh, together and just went with it. So um, I think you can enjoy this. Um, I did not know that much about this guy and his uh, his journey uh, until the talk we just uh, recently had. So it's it was uh, kind of exciting for me too to learn a bit more about him. So um, without any further ado, let me give you my conversation with the one and only Svard. Står det rekord faktisk Hallo, hallo ja. Hallo, everybody <laughs> Hej Skal vi prøve da, eller? Ja, så sånn det går Ok, uh, I am back On air This, it, It's been a while uh, Today I'm on the road again I'm uh, actually in uh, a rehearsal room Right now uh, North of Oslo somewhere I have no idea where I, where I am now but uh, I, I, I guess it's the rehearsal room of uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Steinar Svard Jonsen, uh, who is sitting here today as a target. Yes, hello everybody. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Radio Land. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome. And uh, you gave me a beer? Yes. Home uh, brewed? We need some home brewed beer when you're talking, right? What, what can we call this in English? Uh, it's a kind of Mexican beer. Yeah. With a touch of corn and very fresh, thin taste. Very authentic. Yes. I will have a sip. Skål. Yeah. Skål, yeah. Thank you very much. That felt really good. Um, I suppose there will be a couple of uh, beer breaks within the recording here, but that is... Uh, it's the good thing about technology. We can just stop and start again, and no, yeah, no one will we notice. Just stop it. <laughs> it's all fake. Yeah, it is. it's Saturday. Why not? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Okay, man. Let's just start at the beginning as we do. I, um, I usually go through your biography uh, somehow, your life uh-huh. story, you yeah. know, and you tell us the dirty bits, the filthy bits, and the nice bits, whatever you choose to share. You know? Yeah. So we, let's start by where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up on Tonsenhagen in Oslo. So you're also a city boy? Yeah. Yeah. Actually a city boy. Where is that uh, comparison with uh, Os- Oslo Centrum? Uh, uh, Tonsenhagen, Bjerke Travbane. Uh, it's a bit north. Uh, I think it was 20 minutes with bus. Okay. Downtown. Yeah. So not uh, center center? No, not center center. But is this like uh, apartment buildings and uh, a kiosk on the corner kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. In the seventies, it was a kiosk and uh, <laughs> <laughs> apartment buildings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ubus. Ubus. Yes. You uh, <laughs> o- only child or siblings? Uh, I had a sister. Yeah. Uh, she was seven years older than me. Uh, unfortunately, she died in about eighty-seven. Wow. And uh, it was about that time I started playing. 87? 87, yeah. May, may I ask how old the, uh, the both of you were? Uh, I was 15, yeah, and she was 21, yeah. What happened, if I may ask? Uh, she got cancer. Oh, man. So she was fighting cancer for uh, three, four years. Oh, that's too bad to hear, man. Yeah, it was shit. Uh, life isn't fair always, you know. No, it's not fair. You haven't even begin begun the the life yet, you know. It, it's still at the starting stages. Mm. So that, that's unfair. Sorry about that. Yeah. So that was in yeah, eighty seven. Yeah. So I started just digging myself into the music then dream. So the music music became kind of an escape for you then. Yeah, it did. And uh, also at the same time in uh, eighty seven, we moved to the other part of town. Yeah. And I uh, changed school, and uh, I met Marius. Yeah. 
and we had the common music styles, and we talked together, and yeah, maybe we should start playing together. So that was the very first thing? Yeah. But what did you, did you start with the keyboard, or did you... No, I, I had the guitar at that time. Yeah. So we were playing guitar together. And I did some guitar school and stuff, but nah, that didn't learn us anything. <laughs> I actually did. The, I actually did the so same thing. We love to <laughs> listen to Venom and all that shit. Yeah, that was my next question. What what got you into picking up the guitar in the first place? Was it uh, which bands did kind of inspire uh, you to do that? Who did actually? I think it was mostly Venom. Yeah. Venom. Yeah. Yeah, that's old school. And uh, also, Mayhem was uh, releasing stuff back then. Yeah, that that's just about the time Death Crush came out, right? Yeah, it is. Eighty-seven. I yeah, because I remember I was listening to the radio and uh, interviews with Ace and Oshet. Yeah. And oh yeah, cool. There's several older bands around there. Yeah. And we started up in eighty-seven, and then uh, I see music in the garden for a while. Was not. <laughs> I had to learn to play first. Yeah, sure. But that was just like you sitting on your bed in your room and uh, listening to Venom and picking black yeah, metal. And... Picking things and uh, and Marius and I we was together all the time and we was inspiring each other. So I started rehearsing uh, in the basement in my parents' house. Yeah. And we got a drum kit and some amplifiers and we was developing music styles down there then, our own style. So you have basically followed each other your whole life until now then, you and Marius. Yeah, from uh, 87, yeah, yeah, when we met. Yeah. By the way, he just came here and crashed the podcast just at the beginning, so yeah. he's, he's in the house. But he's thirsty now, so she, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's coming to drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so you started mm. jamming together, and um, what was that about? Was it just trying to do... Venom covers or making your own stuff? Uh, making own stuff from the first okay. morning, actually. So you had own riffs at the yeah. beginning? Already then there was a lot of music in my head. Yeah. So it was just to push it out, pick it down and get it out. So you Always. recorded demos from the get-go? Yeah, we have uh, several hours of recordings from that time, but I can't can't play it for anyone. It's just the music in the garden. <laughs> so this was just like a tape recorder and uh, yeah, the record play pause. The classical tape recorder, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I had the right channel and he had the left channel in, and yeah. Okay, so you didn't do. <laughs> I don't remember who told me this, but uh, you record yeah. once uh, one track and then you play it back on another stereo and then you record a new track. At the, on the recorder again, you know, to yeah, dub I and stuff. I think we did that later, yeah. not, not in the start. Well, that's really necro. Yeah. Sounds beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's this rough, raw sound, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but you guys were young and you started uh, mm-hmm. listening to metal together and uh, obviously Mayhem was around and that stuff, Cadaver. Yeah, Cadaver and Darktron was in then. Of course. So... But did you, know, did you know any of those guys uh, back then? Yeah, we got known with uh, Dark Throne and Valhall too. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, when we listened to Death Crush together, and uh, so they was in Ski, was not far away, because we were on uh, Søndre Nordstrand. Yeah. So we wrote a letter then to Mayhem, and uh, hi, Marius and Steinar, we like this shit and bap, 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 and we have 100 questions <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many pages with questions we had but uh, yeah so it took a week or two and we got a reply and uh, cool yeah and we wrote a new letter to them and asked for the phone number to Einstein and uh, yeah got the phone number and then we called him and asked hey can we come on a visit yeah okay so then we was in she and met up <laughs> And you were like if you're this yeah. and he was a bit older or Yeah. Yeah. He was a bit uh, a bit fjortis then. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the guys outside of Norway, fjortis is like when you're 14, yeah, yeah. that's a typical age, you know. <laughs> yeah. So you were like fanboys then. Yeah, fanboys, hangarounds. Yeah. Just 
Sniff oh. in, what are you doing? Oh, yes. can look over the fence. <laughs> but do look yeah. today at what legacy that has become, what they were actually doing over the yeah. fence back then. Yeah, I remember it was in Oystein's basement in Sheehan. He played riffs for us at his funeral. Fog after a while. Wow. It. The beginnings of that song. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, he had a plan. Can you listen to this? And he, on this Marshall, he play this funeral fog teams. And yeah, God, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, but and, uh, they didn't record that for many years, right? No. But uh, already in uh, 88, when it was the first time, he had the uh, riffs from that song. Wow. And uh, another thing Morris reminded me here is uh, was Øystein was at our place also in 88. Late 88, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, Marius certainly says to me when we reunion now in some years ago, yeah. can you remember we had a Mortem song that we didn't want to use, but we played it for Øystein. And Øystein asked if he could get those riffs, okay. get the riff yeah. from that song. And uh, yeah, we gave him one riff. And uh, you're listening to Funeral Fog now, that's actually on, in the song. Really? <laughs> so it's an old Mortem riff there. Wow. It's just uh, in the, the first break, when, uh, before the vocals come in. Do you, do you, do you, do you, do you. That's an old Mortem riff. <laughs> so that's your guitar riff, basically. <laughs> yeah, actually. Does Tuno, so, Tuno know about this? <laughs> no, I, I have not done anything with it. No. I just find it. Yeah, yeah, sure. A good memory. You sprinkled a bit of your magic in there, in, yeah. the, po- in the pot. <laughs> so you, I already uh, obviously spoke to Marius. He yeah. had his own podcast episode of, on here. And uh, he told me about that you two basically got intertwined into that whole uh, clan of people. And uh, did that start from the get-go? You were, st- you were part of the gang? Yeah, I think Marius maybe was a more part of the gang than me. Okay. So I remember he was a lot in she and I can't remember the names of the people we met. And uh, also in uh, 1990 when I started playing keyboard, yeah. when Pelle heard that I was playing keyboard, he didn't want to talk with me anymore. Really? Because he... Hated keyboards. Okay, so you were like, you were a <laughs> synther. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. So yeah. when, I, when I was on a visit there uh, the last time, so he ran into this room and l- smacked the door. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. uh, to, to his defense, he was young. <laughs> yeah, he was young. Yeah. You know, <laughs> teenager, I suppose. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so keyboard keyboards, that was like a brand new thing in... That scene, then I suppose. Yeah, it was. Were you uh, perhaps one of the first ones to introduce that uh, uh, instrument? God, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, maybe it was in 1990. And that's really early. That's yeah. almost before it was black metal, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we released this Slow Death Mortem demo in 89 when I still was playing guitar. Yeah. And after that demo, we made several new tracks. And uh, But uh, then when I was 18, I got a keyboard in my birthday present. Yeah. And uh, that sold a lot of shit. Because all the melodies I had in my head, I, I couldn't get out on the guitar. And I got a keyboard, but I like, wow, I can play all of them. This is my f- instrument. So you didn't so, like uh, ha- have it on your wish list or anything. No, it was a random just gift. Surprise! Bang! Hey, where should go with the keyboard? Okay, that's kind of funny story. Yeah, it is, and uh, also at the same time, I got the CD with this uh, Toccata. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. A very famous box thing, and I, I remember I was sitting here. Uh, Listening to that track the first time. Oh my god. This shit is crazy. Oh. So the day after I went to the library. And uh, I showed them the CD. I, I want all the scores to this 
this piece. Okay, yeah, I went into the musical department there and uh, I got a book with the scores then. And I oh, the them. musical uh, uh, notations yeah. for it. Okay. Musical notations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I looked at them and what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so you can read notes. No, I can. I can read. It. <laughs> I, I still can't. Okay. Yeah. No. I, I, it's Greek. So, to yeah, me. this was in 1990, 91. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, then asked, uh, "Do you have a note finder for beginners?" Yes. So we went into the child's department there and had a note finder for beginners. <laughs> so I took a copy of that and uh, just started picking down. And uh, that was what I did after. Because we recorded uh, My Angel, Arcturus. Because yeah. we created a new band when I started the keyboard. Because uh, it was too spacey and too different from Mortem. So it, you couldn't use the same band name. Okay, so because of that gift, unexpected yeah. gift, you started Arcturus. Yeah. Yeah. So Marius and I, we started also Arcturus together. The two of you. Yeah. Yeah. Two of us. And uh, so we were thinking, okay, we need a new band name because this is so different. So we want something. Uh, what was the criteria? We want something physical, but abstract but uh, and uh, with a space vibe on so okay let's look at the star map yeah so we looked at the star map and there was a star called Arcturus and ah that's perfect let's pick that Be just because it sounded uh, cool yeah it sounded cool when you cool, said yeah. it you know yeah, yeah cool and it had this space vibe like the new music we made it's original it is yeah I don't know any other bands called that, you know. <laughs> no, I've seen uh, other things, a fish boat and uh, American rapper, and uh, somebody has tried later and called okay. themselves actors. Yeah, yeah. So I remember when we played together recently in Oslo, we had a show, uh, Morken Mortem at Centrum mm -hmm. Sene, which was magical, by the way. Uh, I remember when we were walking up and down the corridors there, I asked you if. Arcturus, because Arcturus is not a band I have dived deep into. Mm -hmm. It's a bit uh, unknown to me. Yeah. Um, but I asked you, is that basically a black metal version of uh, Hawkwind? And yeah, I remember you really haven't heard Hawkwind or something. Because that's that's an old space rock band from mm -hmm. the 70s, you know? That, okay. uh, the first, one of the first bands Lemmy was in. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So, so you haven't heard them? No. That's space rock. And that space that is basically rock, yeah. what you're telling me. Arcturus is like a space metal band then. Yeah, kind of. It is. Yeah. So we didn't put so any bound around us uh, with Arcturus. We just made music totally free of... What came out? What came out. What came out, yeah. Yeah. But what, what, what got you into this space mood? What was... Uh, are you a sci-fi fan? Um, Have you read, read sci-fi really. books? No, I think this more it, it is close your eyes and dream. Yeah. Kind of style, yeah. A floating atmosphere. Floating atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of, you know, it's it's not the same thing, I suppose, but I have, uh, I'm a big Burson fan, obviously. Mm. What uh, I have no opinion about the guy, but uh, the music is something that brought me into all of this, you know. And he has done some atmospheric stuff, as you know. Yeah. And that is the kind of things you can shut your eyes and just float around, you know. Yeah, I can it's... see that several reputations. Yes. Things just goes and goes. Monotone and stuff. Yeah. But you haven't done monotone uh, stuff, right? I'm too progressive to do that. Yes, progressive. Okay. So it's... Everything up in my head goes spins too fast <laughs> to just to hook on one thing and just you're restless, roll aren't you? On. <laughs> too restless, yeah. yeah. Cool. I think that's uh, a bit of the classical vibe. So when I played uh, all this organ shit, and um, then things just goes on and on and on, yeah. knocking in new things all the time. So I'm more that kind of person. I can make a song that uh, there is no repeats. That's okay, so you don't, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. You don't have ground notes that you just put uh, new stuff upon 
and just repeat the ground uh, structure thing. You have new portions. Yeah, you yeah. can have new time and things all the way, but um, it will be a bit too advanced. Yeah. So classical can do that kind of shit that goes on and on and building up, but it's uh, different with the uh, rock style music. They that's need true. Repeat repetitions. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what kind of hooks me into a song if something gets repeated, you know. And if I hear a riff that is really amazing, then I, I, w I want to hear it once more, you know, in the track. Yeah. But sometimes when I listen to a song where a killer part comes along and then it turns out it's just that one time, yeah. then I just have to listen to the song on repeat. Yeah, yeah. So both ways work, you know. Mm -hmm. If you give the yeah, listener a I, bit, yeah. little bit, you know, they, they, they will come back. Yeah, with the cool details that is only showing once. Yes. I like that. Yep. That's, that's, it's kind of a good sales pitch. It is. Yeah. Because if it is a little guitar overtone, mm. and if they do it every time, wee, wee, it just fucks it up. Yeah, it gets old yeah. really fast. Mm -hmm. But that one second it comes, it's like shivers and um, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. If you do it correct, yeah. The music is wonderful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but back to the when you started the band, when you played with uh, Morten, was it only, it was more than just the two of you, right? Yeah, it yeah. is. So, um, back to the start, almost again then, in uh, eighty-eight, late eighty-eight. Yeah, I think very very late eighty-eight. Uh, Einstein was in Oslo picking up a new drummer. Yes. So Jan Axel had contacted Einstein and uh, wanted to move from Trysil and down to Mayhem uh, and start with them. Yeah. Uh, so they went, so we was on the way. So they drove into us, our place so we could uh, say hi to Jan for the first time. Okay. Um, so we had a little chat then, and then Jan went to Ski, and uh, a few days later, I think, can't be, uh, maybe a week later, we met Jan in Oslo. Because then he was bored of sitting down in Ski and waiting, because they had not started rehearsed yet. Ah, okay. They didn't have any place to rehearse at that time. But uh, he basically just lived at Einstein's place or something, or? I'm not sure. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So we invited him for a jam, and uh, then we could told Einstein that yeah we have been playing with Jan, it was really cool, and then Einstein said yeah you can keep Jan warm until we start rehearse. Yeah, and by that time we had a demo ready and we went to the studio, so we recorded the first demo with Jan. It was cool. Are you were productive then? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things went really fast. Yeah. I didn't do any of the things then. School and music. But I stand it wasn't pissed, right? <laughs> because you kind of stole the drummer. <laughs> no, I no, couldn't steal him. No. He had this place. And yeah, as you can see place, today, yeah. he, he can play in a million bands. Yeah, he can. Uh, he, that, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can listen to a track once and then he can play it. Yeah, that's Perfect. Uh, insane, you know. Mm. But that's a gift. It is. His name is stamped all over many albums oh, yeah. and uh, recordings, you know. Okay, so it was the three of you then that were, were Mortem first. Yeah, yeah, three of us. And then we released this demo. Slow death, right? Slow death, yeah. Yeah. And uh, after that, uh, Jan went back to Mayhem. Yeah. So we didn't have a drummer for a while. And uh, but, uh, was more session drummer than when whenever he could he was coming and rehearsed. But yeah, much um, didn't happen, I suppose. It was only that demo, right, with uh, Mortem. Yeah, and uh, after the demo, a while after we started Arcturus, yeah, yeah. and uh, Arcturus and Mortem was living together on separate bands. Yeah, we got some new members into Mortem, but. Made some, uh, I think it was up to seven new tracks, but uh, I was not d directly happy about the tracks. Did you ever record anything with, uh, I know, the guy, uh, Ken Vamsta? No, we didn't uh, never record anything with him. No? I, was going, I have found lots of recordings here from rehearsal room. Yeah, with Ken? With Ken, yeah. Oh, 
It would be fun to hear that sometime. Yeah, I can play it for you later. Yeah, cool. Because <laughs> I know Ken actually. He yeah. is actually uh, he's a funny guy though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he he is actually one of the very first people I got to know uh, in Oslo area. Mm-hmm. Because I was uh, back when I was uh, in my I don't know mid twenties or something. I started hanging out in Oslo because I have got, I've obviously gotten into black metal and I wanted to go in and try to hook up with some people because in Halden, there were nothing. Mm-hmm. I was alone, the lone wolf, you know. But I was sitting at Rockin uh, one time and then uh, Ken was there. Mm-hmm. And you know Ken, he's very sociable. He is yeah. including, you know, as we say in uh, Norwegian. Uh, and I was like, hey, who are you? And, blah, 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 blah. and that just became a little bit of a friendship, you know. So he was the first uh, first guy. And uh, he told me that he used to sing in Mortem, you know. Yeah. So uh, that was like right back to uh, the Stone Age, you know, <laughs> in the beginning of everything. Yeah, I also found a bunch of face lyrics there. Okay. So I think I should give them back soon. <laughs> 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 They're all there. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you you d- did uh, seven about seven tracks with him then, and uh... yeah, together with him and uh, a bass player, uh, Christer. Yeah. And uh, but we didn't go to studio, and then uh, we had a dispute with Ken at the end. Yeah. So too much drinking and rah, 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 and something happened and poof. Yeah. Bye bye, Mortem. It was over. Yeah. Okay. And then so, it was uh, full uh, focus on Arcturus, I suppose. Full focus, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it also explains uh, my interest for Oregon. At, uh, we had this My Angel then in 91. And then you have to go all the way to 94 before uh, Constellation comes out. So in those years, I was practicing uh, classical music. Heaps of classical. Okay. So I remember I had a, got my own key to a church. And I went to church and rehearsed organ. Wow. Uh, that must have been addicting. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, there is episode from uh, 93 I was down in record store Helvete yeah. and uh, there's, uh, there's a Bergen guy sitting there then uh, I have to take it in the Bergen then. <laughs> hello I hear that you over orgel in kirke can I få vara med och höra uh, and I was uh, Mr. yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, Greifi. Yeah. And uh, suddenly uh, I couldn't remember the name of the church. And uh, yeah, where, where is this church? And he asked. And uh, um, I'm not sure what it's called there. And just whoosh, disappeared. <laughs> okay, so you never brought him? No, I couldn't. No, he could uh, catch fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew what he was doing, so... Yeah, was it that time that yeah. he was kind yeah. of yep, dabbling in criminal stuff? Yep. <laughs> okay. So that was the time you got to know that guy? Yeah, i never known him. Okay, just... so never become a friend or something? No. No. Never. Because you were intertwined into the Helvet uh, store, right? Yeah, I was there a lot in the start. But you didn't work there like Marius did, right? No. No. I was only going in there and playing video games at the back room. Yeah. Hanging out, yeah, hanging Dr- out, drinking Coca Cola, yeah, yeah, cola and a beer, and yeah, yeah, yeah cool. And uh, but um, uh, modest, so modest when, modest when things started to happen, uh, I got a message that things is harding up now, so yeah. to make a choice, and I choose to just stay away. Yeah, okay, so you just chose to. This is not the time yeah. and place to be there. Yeah, I'm here for the music, nothing else. Yeah, yeah. But it, Marius told me that you you two actually were kind of craftsmen, that you made. Uh, yeah, we did. Made some uh, weaponry and costume stuff. Yeah, because we medieval things. We yeah, were so interested in that and Viking stuff, of course. So we made uh, chainmail, and uh, it didn't t- take long before. Uh, Grishnak uh, was interested in chainmail, of course. Yeah, I seen photos. So, and the first chainmail we made was went to him, and then we also made this uh, mace, the spiky thing, because uh, it 
The club. Yeah, the club. Yeah, yes. and because uh, everybody was using just normal spikes and hammered them into yeah. something. Yes. And uh, now we had to make a proper model. So we designed this maze together. Carved in wood and uh, yeah, inserted the nails. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see on the back wall there. You can see a model. Is that from back then? No, this is a brand new. This is uh, made for Mortem Live. So we're bringing this around. But you made this? Yeah, this is uh, quite new, just a few years old. But is it kind of the same uh, look and yeah, uh, design? It, absolute same uh, design, but this is a bit larger for statues. Wow, cool. I need to hold that later. Yeah, <laughs> you can try it. Yeah, yeah, on you. <laughs> but not on me. <laughs> okay, so you, did you make a lot of that stuff? And the, uh, yeah, I, the first the first series uh, we made together with Marius. I think we made uh, 12 or 13 of them together in the start. Yeah. That you gave to bands or you, did you sell them? Or? Yeah, we sold them in Helvete and to friends and uh, this uh, rollespill uh, people. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what's mm. the word uh, for that? It's role-playing games. Yeah, role-playing. Basically. Yeah. 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 They was really interested in this shit. Of course. And uh, I remember t one of the role game guys called me and, hey, we also want chain mails. Yeah, cool. And I agreed. I think it was 11,000 Norwegian kroner and I really needed money to buy keyboards. So 11,000 for one chain mail? And for two. For two. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, with sleeves and everything. Yeah, but it's, it's one yeah. single little uh, metal uh, yeah, everything uh, rod was, uh, you need to bend. Everything was spinned up on a rod, yeah, and yeah. cut up in uh, rings. And oh, man. Made everything from uh, steel wire. How long did you use to... 14 days on one. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sitting there for one month then, and uh, I got one into my first keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, but hey. It's honest work. Yeah, yeah. and that keyboard uh, is the design sound of Arcturus, Constellation, Aspera, the orchestral sound, and uh, it's an uh, Ensonic SD-1. So uh, I got that from uh, making chainmails. You still have those? Sh hmm? oh, the, 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 the keyboards and stuff? Yeah, is yeah. there. Is those? Is yeah. that the old one? Yeah. Oh, cool. And the oldest one uh, is on the wall over there, because it didn't want to do anything more after uh, 100 flights around the world. Oh, I, so it was I got beaten to death? Yeah. Okay. So I bought uh, exactly the same keyboard, and this is fine. But is this... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not that into synthesizers, but is it a synth or is it a controller? Uh, it's a synth. Yeah, so it has the modules inside it. Yeah, everything is the inside, yeah. Yeah. Do you use controllers too? MIDI controllers? Yeah, no, late, later days I'm uh, using some controllers too, yeah. Yeah, then you, you, then you basically have the, the sounds on the computer. Yeah. Yeah, and it goes through a wire into the... Yeah, yeah. and uh, that's uh, what I'm doing. I'm uh, sampling all the old keyboards now. Mm. And mm. I'm mapping it into to the computer. So uh, I don't need to bring the old keyboards around anymore. So they can be safe at home, and I'm uh, using these simple MIDI keyboards. But you have, do you have live. to sample, uh, you know, the the velocity and stuff like that, or how? Yeah, is some sounds are really hard. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, the coolest sounds I have not made them perfect yet, so I have to sample them several times more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of work some, then. Yeah, lots of work. Yeah. But do you do all this? Do you kind of sample all the pitches, or do you pitch them afterwards? In yeah, the I have days? a little uh, program. I can't remember the name of the program. Let me see. So you make the pitches after the you have sampled it. Yeah, because uh, you're mapping. You're mapping one and one tone in. Yes. Okay, so you take each tone. So you sample the robot is the program. Yeah. And I uh, that program uh, then I don't need to do everything manual. I just so it's a sample robot that uh, I want uh, two samples and octave, mm. or uh, if I want twelve on an octave, so I can get all the half tones. It's also possible. Okay, so it, it, without and, uh, sounding forced. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, then uh, this program just sample everything in automatic when I'm wow. just sitting and watching or go and eat. Yeah. And I come back and uh, bang, all the samples are in. And I just transfer them into Halion 6. Technology, Choose man. Choose. Technology. Hmm. It's fascinating stuff. It is. It makes it so easy, you know. Even when we when we played in Oslo together and you you brought you brought your camper rig. Yeah. You know, it's it's so easy. Uh, you don't uh, even where, need a where fucking is the backline. Yeah. I don't use a backline. Uh <laughs> I just <laughs> use this lunch box here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, things are changing. Yeah, yeah, they are. And then monitor? No, we don't want monitor we have in there. Yeah. yeah. But that's it's kind of safe too because you can play all around the world and you will still have your sound and your monitoring directly yeah. into your ear and <laughs> it's genius. Yeah, it feels very safe and uh, coming around old amplifiers, broken tubes, everything. Yep. Shit you can find, and uh, now I just put this direct into the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Camper, uh, camper direct in desk. Ah, uh, is 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 genius. I we haven't made the change yet because I don't know. I, I'm kind of used to the living breathing thing back there, you know. Yeah. But uh, it, we are always on the brink of maybe doing a bad show. I don't know if the if the house gear is bad, you know. You never know. I remember once we played it. It it, it was actually our first concert at Inferno, a big deal for a band, a small band, mm. you know. And uh, we we hit the stage and one of the amps didn't work. So Alex, the guitar player, had to stand on the side for two or three songs until uh. they fixed the problem. That you can avoid with your camper stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know. I also got uh, the first Mortem show in Romania. I got a broken amp. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was my first show as a guitarist. And uh, I didn't know how to fix that amp. Or so. It fucked up the show almost. And I actually, uh, Marius is trying to sneak around in the background here, mm. but uh, he actually had quite a bad night uh, in in Romania too. Yeah. <laughs> Ch check out his episode for that story. That's a, that's a funny one for his first yeah. show. <laughs> so, so we choose to go a bit more modern and advanced the shit after that show. Yeah, sure. Sure. And, ah, okay, uh, let's go back in time again to... Yeah. When you kicked off Arcturus, and uh, we, who who was in there? It was you two, and was uh, Jan and Jan, yeah. That was the start. Yeah. Tell and, me about uh, uh, evolution there. Evolution, yeah. yeah. So after my angel recording, uh, Marius chose to leave to play with Stigma the Bolicum in Trondheim. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No, no, no. 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 Is it? Wrong? Yeah, it's wrong because I left Mortem for Stigma Diabolicum. Left Mortem, okay. And then I started Came back for with you again. Yeah. And then after Einstein died, I have nothing left. Okay. So after Einstein you left, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. You got corrected there, sir. I got corrected. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but tell me about the beginnings of the band. You kind of figured out your own sound with the keyboard stuff. And, yeah. Uh, you cr kind of created your own realm there. Yeah, own atmosphere. So, I was uh, not direct inspiration from Eddie or the band, the Star Wars Tourist. Because uh, I had so much music in my head and my own story to tell. And I... Uh, also made in creating their own sounds on this keyboard and I didn't didn't need to listen to anything. Oh that's cool. It's original. It is. Absolutely. So we didn't think so much about it, but uh, I can see now it's what's quite original. Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah man. But you you yeah. said that there were a few years that were kind of on, on a standstill that you were only Yeah, after that recording things went a bit slow. And you were evolving your own bit, playing. Yeah, uh, with Ken and Mortem uh, for a while. Yeah. And there was lots of rehearsing in that church. Yep. So it took a bit of time to learn this piece the Toccata Fuga I, I choose to just knock it in when I first was playing organ yeah. 
It took me one and a half year to learn that piece because I, I also learned to play at the same time. Yeah. Is that a good piece to begin with? As a beginner? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you if you want to play four melodies at once, it's a good piece to start with. Yep. Mm. Yep. But you, I, I suppose you learned it. Because it's end. four voices in the fugue. Oh man. So if you want to do that shit with full pedal kit, 32 pedals, and play three voices with your hands and one voice with your foot, it's a good piece to start with, yes. Oh shit. Because uh, it's very German, it's very... Yeah. So it's easy to read. Okay. It's easy to take breaks and start over again because it's very ready. Yeah, Yeah. organized. Or very organized. Yeah. Okay, so in 94, was that the year where you, where you kind of kicked uh, off ni- again? In 93, yeah. 93. And in uh, 94, yeah, then we started up uh, and Chris was coming in. Uh, Garm? Garm, yeah. Yeah. And uh, she was there a lot in the start and uh, he just pushed on, come on, we don't have tracks enough for an album yet. Yeah, okay, we make an EP then. But was that the same yeah. time he had Ulver? Yeah. Okay. So there was a rehearsing on the room beside of us. Yeah. Because all this was uh, Shippegata 21 in Oslo. Just, Heard about uh, that one. Yeah. The core. Yes, <laughs> there you go. The core of Norwegian metal there. You took bear breaks at Elm Street? Yeah. Yep. The same building as Elm Street, just the other side. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, the rehearsing, down on Elm Street, yes. making bears up, sleep at the rehearsal place, and start rehearsing again in the morning. Living, breathing music. Yeah, it yep. was. I suppose you missed those it times. <laughs> it was 20 or 30 rooms with bands there. Yeah. It was big. Expensive uh, rent? No. 1,800 a month. Yeah. Which uh, several, square... all of you were sharing yeah. the bill yeah. kind of thing. 70 square meters. Yeah. Because Mayhem and everyone was there after a while, right? Yeah. Yeah. Satyricon, Mysticum. I don't know. Many bands was in on the same place. Yeah. yeah. Coming and going. So then you had a scene, literally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you got together there, you kicked off the band, you got Garim in there. Garim you... in, and we made this constellation. Yeah. Give it out. And uh, oh, By yourselves, on a, on a label? Oh, Nocturnal Arch with uh, Thomas Haugen. Is that Norwegian then, I suppose? Yeah. yeah. Thomas em- Haugen. Uh... Emperor. Yeah, 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 Samot. Samot. Yes. Okay, so he had his own label. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't, didn't know that. So he pressed CD or vinyls or wasn't it CDs the first one? Yeah, yeah. It's the mm. it's the year of the CD, I suppose. Ninety three, mm. ninety four. That's the top of the CD game. So yeah. So we released four tracks on that, and then uh, went back to the rehearsal place and made the four next ones. Yeah. Aspera, Gem Sinfonia. And everything was uh, released through through his label, the first uh, album as well. No. No, only the constellation. Okay, yes, which was like an EP thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but did you do anything live, or did you? Did you? Uh, not at that time. So we on... we didn't have a repertoire enough to do anything live. No. We only had the uh, the My Angel and the constellation. That's six tracks. That's not enough to go on stage. No. All right. T- tell me about the first album uh, that. Uh, the period and how you made it label wise what happened uh yeah so constellation yeah yep and uh, it was uh, actually i was in studio with uh, satiricon and played in that shadow throne album yeah you told me yeah, that all the keyboards there and uh because uh, we needed a guitarist in uh, octarus and then uh, Thomas Haugen, Samut, yeah, was in studio with uh, Satyricon. And um, I tried this beginning of Rødt and Svart on him, and uh, he played it perfect. And yeah, yeah I agreed that uh, he will play on the Constellation with us. Okay. 
And uh, I think it was there for it happened to be on his label too. Ah, uh, okay, yes. So I think that's the connection there. But had they released anything else that you know of? A nocturnal art? Hmm. Yeah, they have. Don't they? Is it only him, by the way? Was it only him? Yeah, nocturnal art is uh, Samut. Yeah. yeah, he did everything. He didn't have like a staff. No, it's not that big label. No. Okay. I have no idea. That, that, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> but he had more yeah. artists then, basically. More black metal stuff on there. I think uh, several bands have uh, given out something there. Yeah. On the Nocturnal Art. Yeah, sure. But you ended up there, uh, obviously, because he was in there and played some. Mm. Yeah. So he helped us out at the Constellation. And then we was back. I made uh, four more tracks. So we had a full new album then. That will be Aspera. And also at that time, because um, in uh, the ship we got at 21, uh, he was going around in the corridors and listening at the doors. And if there was something interesting, cool music, we knocked on the doors and we went in and asked if we could sit and, re- at least and listen the to them. Yeah? yeah, cool. And uh, then I met uh, this Tritonus band, Progressive from Ytre Enebak. And uh, Carl August Tiedemann was playing guitar there. And uh, yeah, I liked this music. It was a little bit cool. Was Fritjof there too? Fritjof? <laughs> I'm not sure. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> No. Akke de Utre de Baka. Yeah, right. Med knus, det briller bra så. Ja. Sorry about that. I just Mule. had to do it. <laughs> it's yeah. Norwegian culture. Sorry. Yeah. But, Continue. Uh, <laughs> but this, this was in Oslo then in Shippegata 21. Yeah, sure. And uh, remember, I asked uh, Carl August Tiedemann, hey, can you help us out uh, doing guitar on uh, our next album? Uh, but you guys are playing this uh, black metal thing. Uh, uh, I'm a progressive. I'm very clean. And, uh, oh. I'm not sure if I can... Okay, I will help you out since you're a good friend. <laughs> but uh, I will only play on the album and uh, then I will just leave. Okay. <laughs> Back yes. to my uh, ghost player. Treat on this uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, please. Thank you. And uh, we had some rehearsals together and then we went into Panzer Studio at Kalbakken in Oslo. And uh, it was July. I remember it was really hot there. Yeah. Got fried in that little barrack. <laughs> Who ran that, by the way? Panzer. It sounds like it, it was dedicated to metal, right? Yeah, Panzer Studios. Uh, I can't remember the name of that mixer anymore. Uh, so we recorded it there in uh, July, was it? Yeah. And Kalle Tiedemann played guitar in, and I said, uh, yeah, I had left room on the three of the songs so we can do some solos. You can do one here and one there. And Oh, cool. I love to play solo, he said. And, and then he did this classical Aspera solos. So, um, remember, his first takes something. And, is it good enough, boys? Yes, yes. <laughs> This is really good. <laughs> Sweep away. <laughs> Sweep away. <laughs> Sweep into the sunset. Yes. Yeah. Then later, yeah, he gave up something and he called it a Grim Sweeper. Yeah. So oh, he liked man. to sweep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. And uh, yeah, he recorded that. And after that, he left. And uh, already on the last days in studio Knut Magne Valle showed up from Gjerstad and, and also started rehearsing in Kippegata 21 with a band mm. and he suddenly came into our rehearsal place so he was already hanging around uh, and I got quite quickly known with him and uh, we agreed that he was taking Kalle's place once Kalle was done in studio with us so at the last days in studio, I remember Knut was there visiting and listened yeah. to also mixing that album. And after that, the Kalle recorded his solos on a video and gave it to Knut. So Knut could pick it down from a video. Okay. And he did. 
So he's good. Quite good guitarist. Uh, he has a he has a gehör, yeah. I suppose. Good air. Yep. And uh, with the uh, yeah, Kalle left and Knut in, and Knut uh, was also doing a little live place in Yarsta and asked uh, for uh, if we could uh, play a release concert for that album. And yeah, why not? And everybody agreed in the band, and we rehearsed in all the tracks. And we had a little rehearse concert, a little uh, release, release concert. concert yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, that's Yashta. the first one. Yeah, that's the first one. Was it in December '96? I think so. Where is that at? Yashta in uh, Posörlande. It's three and a half hours south of Oslo, southwest. Okay. And uh, why there? Why there? Because Knut was owning this little place, and uh, he said, "Yeah, it will come, people. It will be a big, cool party, and we can so have this private kind of property." Private, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Knut's place. Wow. Called Saga. So it was hundred and something people in there, and we had a big party, and we played the whole album. Awesome. Just like on the album, so that was cool. But. Uh, of course, we had bad sound on stage, and Chris had a shit experience singing. Okay. And after that, he said that, no, never more live. Yeah. This is not suitable for me. I didn't feel comfy at all on stage with this sound and all those people, so... I want to actually rest the studio band. But uh, basically, did, did, you, did you have like proper monitors and PA? And yeah, st- and st- and the did? sound check was fine. Okay. But then somebody with sausage fingers had bloop, yeah. adjusted and uh, fixed things when he was having a break. I see. Uh, oh, that's a rough beginning then. So Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know the stress, the first gig ever. Yep. Many people did that. <gasps> you just have panic. Total oh, panic. <laughs> how, how did you experience it? Was it uh, a good one? I also had panic, but uh, I did my stuff correct all the way, but yeah. I, it was very loud. Yeah. Because there was side fields there. Tiny little place and side fields, and the side field was tuned to maximum or something. Yeah. So it was so fucking loud, I couldn't hear anything for days afterwards. <laughs> so, Okay. <laughs> we managed we did the whole thing I have it on recording so I can listen to it this day <laughs> okay so you still have it yeah. that would be cool to hear do, do, is there any footage from it mm, not really there, there is some tracks on video on a v- VHS video is that released uh, ever Nips. no private. we don't want to release it yeah. but I also got that cool and I got the Almost the whole gig on a cassette, but uh, we played a tiny bit longer than 45 minutes, the cassette stopped. And it's gold today, though, for the collector out there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this only original cassette. Yes, <laughs> the master. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, on the new Arcturus box set, I think uh, there is a few tracks from that gig. Okay, so you are actually releasing yeah. some of it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was listening to... Cause because of the bad monitoring, it was really difficult to sing correct and do everything correct. Yeah, in pitch. Yeah, yeah, in pitch. I remember Chris was standing there with this one finger in the air and uh, this panic. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some tracks went up to really good. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 this bear is... <laughs> This bear is killer, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking good bear. Eh? <laughs> Fucking aisle. <laughs> yep, carry on. Uh, where was I? Um, yeah, I managed to find a few good tracks there in the middle of the set. Yeah. And uh, I recorded them into Cubase and sent them uh, onto the record company, the Propacy. And uh, they wanted, uh, because this big box is coming out now, Arcturus box. It's not box. out yet. It's not out yet, Aha. but it's already sold out. Awesome. So there's lots of special things there. It's, is it 64 pages of interviews and old pictures? Wow. It's a treasure of a box. When is that set to release? Uh, is it in uh, September, October this okay. year? Okay. All the pre-orders are sold out. Yeah. 
So it's a good time to do a podcast then. It is to push that thing. Yeah, yeah. it is not sellable anymore because it's sold out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but very but cool. for all the people that bought it, just yeah. wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Fun, cool. And uh, there, there is some tracks from this concert, and so people can listen to how it was. Yeah. First live experience with Arcturus. What happened on then after the show? Uh, after the show, we went back to the rehearsal place, and uh, it was supposed to be a studio band then for a while. Yeah. So we made up, started the masquerade, Knut and I. I think um, Chaos Path is the first track we made together. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't think about anything other than just getting known with each other and uh, making music. We were living on the rehearsal place, both of us. <laughs> did you like make a living uh, from like work, or uh, was it school, or what did you uh, do yeah. at that time? Uh, I was doing mechanical school in uh, from 1990 to 1993, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I got uh, this Lærling Plus. Yeah, yeah. Practice or practice, what? yeah. Practice. What's the word for that? Lærling, Marius. Lærling, trainee, trainee. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, trainee. Perfect. Trainee. Thank yeah. you. So I w- was uh, lucky enough to get uh, trainee in SIS as a the mechanic. Air, yeah, the airplane. Yeah, Scandinavian Airlines. Mm. So uh, from September '93, I was working there and financing everything afterwards with that. Yeah. So I was working and I was rehearsing, living at the rehearsal place. Double life. Yeah, uh, double life. Yeah. yeah. There you go. The music dream. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like it always is when you're giving out albums, the next album that's going to solve everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this time we're not going to get cheated. We're going to be rock stars yep. and get heaps of money. Of course. And uh, always, and then albums comes out and they have 10 interviews. And silence. Yeah, it's, for, it's <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> Typical. And no money. Yep. <laughs> Not enough money to pay the rent on the rehearsal place. Nothing almost. Oh. Yeah. That's a typical circle. And then you're making new tracks. Okay, the next album will be a killer. But and, uh, I, but 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 you you touched on like that when we when we were off the air here. You touched upon the thing around the economics around the album. But back then, how was it with like? Uh, advances and stuff. Oh, I got studio budget to yeah. pay pay out the mix and the master. Yeah, but uh, it was no signing fee. No, I can't remember any signing fee. No money in the pocket, uh, yeah. kind of thing. It was first on season of mist. We got signing fee, and we got money up front. Yes. Of. Yep. But at that time, it was just paying out studio. And, and then hopefully zip. some royalties yeah. down the road. Yeah, I yeah. hope it comes. Yes. And uh, because of uh, companies in uh, America and in France and all that, uh, Tono, the rights composers' right organization in Norway. Yes, they wonderful. Couldn't, they wonderful couldn't thing. bring down the money. And uh, we, they, yeah, the company said, "Yeah, we're paying half a euro in mechanical royalties." Mm. But no, no, of this money reached Norway. Okay, I don't know if you experienced that. No, the but, thing uh, from Peaceable is really good. London is just up and go now. I don't, I don't have a overseas publishing. I have mm-hmm. only Tono as of now. Mm-hmm. But I usually earn money from that via the live concerts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So even if I play in in Fredrikstad or in Madrid, you know. Mm-hmm they will get that mm. money. So you can, uh, I suppose you are registering your overseas concerts with them. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yes. Yep. Ask you some questions. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and uh, in La Masquerade, God, it's so much to talk about, uh, yeah. actually, but uh, we take some of it. Yeah, sure. This is your hour. Mm-hmm. Just go so, ahead. So, uh, it's, it's Should we maybe close the door? Or Yeah. Would you, you mind uh, Marius? Just uh 
So we're playing uh, with Knut then. We made this first track, was Chaos Path. We didn't have any name for it yet. Yeah. Ah, it's good one. Juicy. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, we had a f- Knut brought in a four track recorder and uh, recorded in. We had filled up three tracks on the four track. Guitar, we used the sequencer, keyboard, drum machine. I made the first plot of uh, the Chaos Path. And uh, I come back the day after, listening to the tape, and suddenly there was this crazy vocal on this track. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, we listened to that. And wow, who is this? A seaman comes in the door. Because he had got a key to our rehearsal place and he was walking around there and collecting empty bottles to give punt. Yeah. Because he could mon- get money back from empty bottles in Norway. Yeah, in the stores. Yeah? Yep. And, uh, hello guys. Do you like the vocals? I, I found this four track recorder here, so, um, I just recorded the, there was one free track, so I had a lyric and I recorded it uh, on this track because I liked the track. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. That yeah, was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> oh my God. And uh, exactly how we did it on the album later, it was on that. Okay. Record player. <laughs> so he actually auditioned for the band without the band knowing. Yeah. Yeah. It did. Yeah. Uh, Knut and I, we looked at each other and uh, think, okay, how do we explain this to Kristen? Ah. Yes. Yeah, because uh, we don't have any agreement with Seaman. Uh, We're talking about the Vortex now, yeah, by the Vortex, way. Yeah, Vortex, yeah. Yes. And, uh, okay, and uh, I can't remember any details there, but uh, we got an agreement with Chris that uh, Vortex was doing this one song at the album. Like and a guest uh, artist Like thing. a guest artist, yeah, yeah. guest appearance. Yeah. So uh, we kept it that way and we didn't have any discussion or deeper agreement around it. So yeah, okay, Simon, you, you will record uh, this on the album then since you did it so fine on uh, this portrait. <laughs> wow, what a, what a way to come into a band. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool way. <laughs> Just take the free, freedom and go in there and do it. Mm. Ah, yeah. cool. And uh, also another story, Masquerade then. Uh, before studio, I uh, had this long, monotone uh, Adastra song, deep feelings. I was dreaming a lot. And uh, it was keyboard all the way, and the piano mid part, and a big end of the song. And then Chris uh, says to me, hey, Can we change off some of the keyboard with the proper instruments? Um, and Chris so, said yeah, this Chris uh, okay. Garm yeah. and yeah that's possible uh, okay and I think he called me back then and yeah I have booked now a quartet with the uh, violin viola cello and bass wow and uh, but you have to make the scores for this shit then yeah and uh, we can only afford them to have them one day so everything must be perfect oh and I remember okay Make the scores, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I got a little notation program then in Windows 3.1. <laughs> 3. <laughs> Old Windows. Where, where are we now? Is it 90... 96, 96. 97. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and this old printer with a big paper roll on. Yeah. That rolled out paper and you just took off the whole Oh, the one print. with the holes in yeah. the side? Yeah, hold on the yeah, side. Yeah, 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 yeah cool. <laughs> <laughs> all the equipment and I make all the scores for four instruments. Wow. All the key- keyboard must be translated for this Adastra. And I remember I was so nervous coming into the studio and I met these four professional musicians and uh, gave them the scores. Uh, here is the scores. Yeah, and uh, I looked at it. Yeah, looks good. Okay, we try. And they start playing on it, and it sounds perfect. Oh, really? Oh, God, I got the biggest goosebumps in my the universe. That's a reward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was only one place I had to help them a tiny bit, touch on the piano, yeah. to get the right... 
the right feeling in it and uh, it went out perfect and we recorded all the violins and stuff in one day that was the budget wow <laughs> and you nailed it yeah we nailed it yeah are we talking so. the second album now by the way yeah second full length yes yeah oh, that's also the first with uh, with the uh, vortex yeah it is yes so you so, um, you, re- the, um, you reassigned to a new label by then or was the, was it the same it was misanthropy doing oh, british oh, yeah okay that's the same and, that uh, did burn some they, after a while yeah and they also signed his own to music for nations wow the 80s label yeah oh cool the misanthropy music for nations they did like uh, metallica and i know uh, yeah awesome you're in good company then yeah it was <laughs> But even then, we didn't see any money. But that's yeah. Oh no, rock stars! <laughs> no, no rock stars. And we didn't play live because we had decided that kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, then I felt it. Uh, like, God, I need to go on stage. Yeah. And uh, it happened a lot then in '97. Yeah. Uh, so I remember I was making the last brass solo on the Masquerade album. I was sitting at home, actually. I got this A.4 connected A.4 players and an analog mixer board. Yeah. So, and I was recording the last things there. And then Jan Hellheimer come by with uh, Nagash Stian and Amun from Covenant. And uh, they had two guitars with them and played some Covenant themes for me and asked if I could play, join them and play keyboards. But just as a side note here, uh, did, yeah. he, did he do Troll by that point? I'm not sure. I don't think he has started Troll yet. Okay. Because he was playing in Dimmu at that time. Yes. Bass, right? Yeah, bass. Yeah. Uh and uh, they said, yeah, we're going to release an album now and going live. Yes, I want this. Okay. Was it the first Covenant? No, this is the second Covenant. Okay. The next is Polaris. Yes. And uh, cool. This is opportunity to go out live. Yeah. Okay. Just off the masquerade then, and then I can live their studio life and I can go live with Covenant. So you joined them then? Yeah, I joined Covenant. Okay. Said, yes. Yeah, right away. Yeah. And okay, then I got a flight ticket to Germany. No time to rehearse. So I picked on and played all the eight tracks in two days in studio in Germany. Wow. <laughs> Pretty fast done. Oh, shit. And uh, yeah, and that keyboard is there. Still the original the, keyboard. Oh, the second one from the top? Oh, the third one. Ah, yeah. yeah. That's the original cool. I recorded next to Sweden. Oh, there's the poster. Right, yeah, and the poster is on the wall there. Yeah, you should add the uh, pictures to the podcast then. Yeah, handsome <laughs> fellows, young fellows, <laughs> <laughs> young hairy fellows. Yes, hairy. <laughs> You're still hairy, man. Just on the wrong side of the head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gravity forces the head uh. to attach on the underside of the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my father he used to say that yeah, on my uh, chest and on my back, and uh, yeah. yeah. My father used to say he's not with us anymore, but he 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 was getting uh, you know uh, the the moon the bald the moon <laughs> the bald spot, you know. And he said that uh, he, he he's getting taller and he's yeah. growing through his hair, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like just like the kind mountains of. and the trees. Yeah. <laughs> uh. yeah. Okay. So how did that go? You, you recorded uh, with them in Germany. Yeah, we did. It was the two days. Keyboard in, eight tracks, bang. And uh, they released the album and lots of success. They sold 80,000 copies the first days, I think. Yeah. Uh, and on a nuclear blast tour, then uh, with shows to Germany. And I'm not sure how many shows it was, but it was really fun to go on stage. But they were kind of big, right? They went big right away. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. like an instant hit. Yeah. yeah. Nuclear Blast is a company that makes band big at once. The bang. Big. But were, were, was oh. this in the starting days of Nuclear Blast or was this already uh, established? Uh, this uh, was in 98. I'm not sure when Nuclear Blast started. Probably a couple of years before. 
I yeah. think. But they went big yeah. right away then, I suppose, yeah. as a label. Today they're the biggest label, mm. almost, I suppose. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so you got to play a full tour with full packed tour rooms. with Covenant right away. Many and fans. I got all my live experience I needed. Wow, yeah. And yeah, fuck. <laughs> Euro- European tour? Yeah, European tour, yeah. Uh, by a bus? Uh, Nightliner yeah, thing? with uh, all the Nightliner. Wow. With the shabby wheels. Remember when I was sleeping, it was feeling one wrong wheel. Yeah, yeah one yeah. wrong wheel. <laughs> Unbalanced. Yes, yeah. yes. Also, you, you, got, you became the rock star then. Yeah. Got the taste of it. Yeah, got the taste. Yeah. Really good. So, no way back then. And uh, we couldn't do any touring with Masquerade because it was a studio band. And yeah. So we're just home then, starting with new writing. Yeah. And now uh, The Sham Mirrors, uh, Adat Surdum, was written in 98. Because the, the starting riff of Adat Surdum, uh, I played it on a Covenant rehearsal. And asked if Covenant wants that riff. And we played it together and nah, nah, we don't need that riff. So that must be in 98, yeah. Mm-hmm. So already then I started on Sham Mirrors. And while I was making tracks for Sham Mirrors, Chris started up with something else. And we had this disguised Masters album, but it was not really any new music there. But since he was just sitting in the studio, he made up this, yeah. And uh, Shamiros was after uh, Shippegata was closed. Oh. So uh, that album is mostly made by me. Knut moved back to Ashta. He's only made uh, two riffs on that album, I think. Yeah. And... Uh, and the masquerade, it was so much happening on that album. It was like on a kitchen with too many kitchen chiefs. It was a mess. Okay. So I decided I need to make a proper clean album and just wipe up all the small things and make proper melodies, maximum two melodies, active melodies, I love it once. And, and so it was. Mm. Very straightforward clean album with still this deep harmonies and really happy with that one I think uh, Sham is my favorite which label was that was that already on yeah then we went back uh, to Norway Norwegian label uh, Voices of Wonder yes so Chris was already working there then and helped out Ketil so it was good. We got the yeah first album. We got the signing fee. Yeah, yeah you we, got an advance. Advance, yeah. Mm. Uh, it was advance was a kind of studio budget, but since Chris was broken, we was a bit broke all of us. Uh, so we shared the money almost. And okay, so you didn't <laughs> buy your first Ferrari and uh, no, swimming pool. No, and stuff. not for twenty five thousand. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. You're pro- you're progressing in the world. Yeah, it did. And the uh, Norwegian label and the tuner rights, everything was perfect for the composer. We got heaps in. Really good album. And going a bit fast for Torah, but yeah. And after this album, uh, I also I really wanted Arcturus on stage. Yeah. Uh, 2003. The album was released in 2002. And still no gigs. Uh, so I was sitting on Elm Street one evening then in 2002-2003 yeah, mm. with that album out and talking with a guy uh, from Southern Discomfort in Christian Sun yeah and uh, he just knocked 30,000 on the table and said eh I want you guys just shake my hands and we have an agreement and okay yeah wow. I don't know <laughs> <laughs> what uh, the other boys going to say, but yeah, okay, we're going live, yeah. <laughs> and uh, then uh, I called Chris and said, uh, We have booked uh, a show, you're going to be- start to play now. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's maybe about time, he said. Yeah, okay, I think about it. And it went some days, and he called me back and said, uh, I want to arrange a meeting with the band. Oh. Uh, and uh, we met him in Oslo, and then he said, uh, I think it's time now for Arcturus to move on without me, because I have so much to do with Ulver. Yeah. And so many projects going on now, so I, I will need to give Arcturus rest. Mm. So, good luck. With your life, everything, yeah. and I leaving now. Yes. So, <laughs> that was quite funny. I was sitting there then uh, with a book show, uh, and I didn't have any singer. No. Well, how far, uh, how far, uh, how many days until that gig? Was it uh, uh, close? Several months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. And, whoa, okay. Who can replace that guy? That was interesting. Mm-hmm. So I contacted the seaman, but uh, I didn't have any success with him then because he was so high on Dimmer. Of course. That was their peak. Yeah, 2003. Yeah, yeah. that was the way yeah. peak of Dimmer. So he didn't have any time to think about what we was doing. Of course. Because he was only sing on, singing on one track with us. And then, okay, and you know, another guy, because in 96 I was on a really good show on uh, M Street with a band called Manitou I think it is from Lyngdal Christian Sand okay and uh, I really liked the vocals on that album okay but, uh, let's see okay this guy is Eivind Hegland I don't know him. okay I just go down M Street and I try to find him mm. And uh, I met him because he was living there <laughs> almost. <laughs> As you do. <laughs> That's everybody else. Uh, I remember. Contacted me. Hey, are you Avin? Yeah, I'm Avin. Yeah. And uh, it was late on the evening. I should not talk about it late in the evening. But uh, do you want to sing for Arcturus? Uh, and he replied, but I can't sing. Because he was so drunk. <laughs> Okay, here is my phone number. Please call me tomorrow then, and we talk about it. And uh, and he actually remember it, and he called me back, and we agreed to have a rehearsal with him. Uh, so I gave him a few tracks, a few lyrics, just to test. And we met up on the new rehearsal place at Holter. And we tested out Avin Hegland, and it sounded perfect. Everything was picked down, everything was in tune, in pitch, whatever, right place. And uh, I asked him, uh, yeah, do you want to go live with us then? Yeah, no problem. Okay, I'll just give me the rest of the tracks and I will do it. So that's a uh, quick solution and it was really good. Yeah. And uh, remember, we played that show then in Christian Sun. And when we went off stage that evening, the rumors spread and they called us from Bergen, Hole in the Sky, the same evening. Wow. Just an hour off the stage, something. And uh, then we was booked on Hole in the Sky. So this was basically yeah. your second show ever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, with Dr. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Wow. And then uh, rumors went down to Europe, and we had a mini tour around Europe with Evan Hegland, and it was really good. And what happened then on? And then on, uh, I was happy coming home, start making new tracks. And remember the first track I made for uh, the next album, then Sideshow. Yes. It was a uh, shipwrecked Frontier Pioneer. It was the first song I made. And, um, so I gave that to Eivin. And it went a bit silent. Nothing really happened. Mm. And uh, about the same time, he had his job was moving to Stockholm, Sweden. Oi. And he decided to move with his job and disappear. Yes. So again, we didn't have any singer. 2003 and uh, yeah 
But after a while, then I made new tracks. Boom, boom, boom. In sideshow, starting to filling up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then Seaman called me back and said, "Hey, I want to do it after all." Wow. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Have you any new tracks? Yeah, and new tracks. And they got this uh, shipwrecked song, and yeah, you know how that sounds like. It's really good with him on vocals. That's actually, uh, I bought that album mm-hmm. when it was new, so that is my first meeting with uh, Arcturus and your music. Mm. Actually, it is. Yeah, and what actually got me into buying it is was because I'm a big fan of uh, the clean vocals he did in Dimu. You know. Mm. those harmonies and those uh, yeah, melody it's lines yeah it's, it's really good you know and uh, oh he sings on an entire album mm. I'm getting that you know and then I remember a friend of mine he had the first uh, bass player in Mork actually he bought the the, the live thing mm. the uh, the DVD uh, oh yeah live in Oslo yes yeah? because that was from that same period right mm. yeah. yeah not to cut you off but please continue mm. Yeah, so suddenly Seaman was back and all my problems were solved. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I made up the rest of that album and got help on some tracks, some tracks of my own. And we went into the Mölla Studios then. We was there in two weeks. Yeah. It was in February. I can remember because there was no water (laughs) in the studio. It's an old mill by a river, and it was so many minus degrees. So, we, and the only access to water was a little, tiny little creek across the yard there. And I had to, with my boots, knock hole in the ice to get water, access to water. Oh man! So, it was very quick uh, showers, you can say. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> yeah, very, but very quick. Is this uh, Oslo area? No, this is on uh, Mölla. This is in Jærstad again. A Knuts place. Mölla is Knuts. Yeah. And we uh, spent two weeks there. Because the tracks was almost finished. Yeah. And... Um, it was... Uh, putting all the tracks on the whiteboard and was arranging them together. And we tried something and we changed our things and we, we worked very much together then. Mm. It was a really good experience. So you kind of finished the rest of it in the studio then? In the studio. Jammed it out. Yeah. Okay. All the raw material was good. Yeah. And then we just finished it in studio then in these 14 days. Mm. And then the whole album was ready. That's good. What label was that on? Uh, Season of Mists was very interested. Yeah. So we chose them. And we went down to France and we signed the contract together with Michael and he was happy and he was happy. Yeah, you met in person. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, we signed the contract in person and we discussed the contracts on the same table. Did you go to Marseille? Yeah, yeah. we go to Marseille. Yeah, then. to the Riviera almost. Yeah. yeah. A kind of Riviera, yeah. <laughs> I've been down there, uh, not in Marseille, but I've been in Nice and, uh, you know, Monaco and stuff. It's quite beautiful down there. Mm. It is. Oh, man, if someone just brought out, uh, Hugh brought out uh, liquor here. Yeah, welcome, Hugh. Is that a good idea? Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> this is, uh, the, yeah, the, the snacks, uh, Ricard. Oh, man. We learned that... Uh, oh, shit. I heard the crackling of a cork now. <laughs> this crazy shit. What is that, rum? No. Let's oh, smell it. Oh, it's like a licorice kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Oh. Sort of. Anise. Yeah. Bring out some glasses, sir. Okay. We will say this is the part one. Yeah. We will take a break. A little break. Yeah. So there you have it. Uh, stay tuned for the next part of our uh, conversation and uh, the journey through uh, Svarid's um, history here. So uh, see you next time around.
For more concert booking, contact Alexander at doomstarbookings.com. For podcasts or other Mork matters, contact markhallen at gmail.com.